Hello students, I wanted to make a quick video to show you how to navigate the live chart of new clients hosted by the International Atomic Energy Agency. So when you first come to the page, you should see something like this, and all of these tiny little boxes represent individual isotopes of different elements. I'm gonna show you how to use some of the tools on this page to navigate. So the first thing is there are some uh, tools up here that can allow you to zoom in, for example, uh, zoom out, or move from left to right, or right to left, top to bottom, etc. You can also reset it if you get zoomed in somewhere you don't want to be. And another thing that's useful up here is that you can actually type in the symbol for an element that you're interested in, like oxygen 16, and then it will bring you right to the square for oxygen 16. When you zoom in like this, it will show you some decay pathways that can produce oxygen 16, so you don't have to worry so much about all of those um, highlighted cells, just the one that you're interested in. On the right side, right now we're showing the main decay mode, so we can see alpha, beta, positron is this beta positive or electron capture. Most uh, isotopes that undergo positron emission also undergo electron capture, and that's more common especially among heavier elements. And then some other types of radioactive processes that we're not gonna discuss in this class. But you can also change this to show the half-life and uh, you can see along the belt of stability, those are very long half-lives. They don't essentially have a reported half-life. And then as you get farther and farther away from the belt of stability, you'll end up with uh, shorter and shorter half-lives. You can also look at the mass excess or the binding energy for the different isotopes. So those are some fun ways to kind of visualize what's going on. Now down at the bottom, because I clicked on oxygen 16, it brings up this table of information at the bottom that is useful for us for completing this experiment. It'll show me the symbol for the element. This one is stable, so this reports the abundance of this uh, element in nature, so 99.75% of the oxygen you find in nature is oxygen 16. If it were unstable, then a half-life would be reported here, and it's reported usually in seconds, but the units will be indicated here in that box. And the other pieces of information that we're going to be interested in are the binding energy per nucleon. It's represented binding slash A. And so this is our binding energy. So this is our binding energy that we're going to be looking at during the experiment. And then the other thing is the mass excess, which is reported here. So uh, mass excess, binding energy per nucleon, and then over here the half-life are the three pieces of information that we're going to gather from that table. If you are unsure what something means in one of these tables, you can click on it and it will bring up a whole bunch of information about how they calculate it, where they, where it comes from, what the different symbols mean, what the different units are, etc. So that's a useful thing if you get confused and you're not sure about something, you can always click on the label for a column and it will tell you the information that you need to know. I want to also point out another thing about the graph that we have up here. It's um, done in kind of a strange way. So normally when we see the chart of nuclides, if we go across uh, to the right, then we would have atomic number, and then we would go up, and we would have the mass number. And this chart is actually done the opposite way. So if I, let's zoom in a little bit. If I zoom in here, I've got uh, cerium. And this is cerium-140. If I go to the right, I have cerium-141, cerium-142, 143, 144, etc. So each row on here represents a single element. And that means our y-axis is actually the atomic number. So now if I go up one row, then I will go to the next element, which is praseodymium. So 
a mass number is what's along the x-axis and atomic number is what's along the y-axis. As part of your experiment today, you're going to be making a variety of different graphs and you'll be graphing the mass number for the isotope and then the half-life binding energy and mass excess. And in particular, I just want you to be aware of uh, one function that can be helpful and that is changing the axis. So if you click on the axis, under axis options, you can just click on the logarithmic scale. So I'll undo that and you'll see it doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's just like everything is really small and then one is really big. But if you put it in the logarithmic scale, you start to see more of a pattern of how it's increasing and decreasing. So that can be helpful in Excel. I think that's everything that you need to know to get started for this experiment or about how to, how to use this website to help you get data for this experiment. I hope you find it interesting and learn a lot.